We all know galleries are closed at present due to COVID-19 restrictions, but how's the Art Gallery of WA approach these restrictions? We're speaking remotely, of course, uh, to Colin Walker, the new director of the Art Gallery of WA. Um, Colin, first of all, congratulations on your appointment as director of the Art Gallery of WA. Um, you were acting in the role since last July. Uh, hi, Lynn. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, been here since the, the end of July and was on the board before then. Um, look, I'm obviously extremely lucky. Uh, our sector's going through the toughest period of arguably any since since the war, and it's going to be lives as well as livelihoods that are going to be lost as this crisis extends. So uh, my good fortune in being securely employed is something that I, I really don't take for granted. Um, I mean, look, I, I even recall back in the 80s and living through what really was a devastating impact of the Thatcher government and the mass unemployment that that brought mm. to, uh, to, to Liverpool, where I'm from. And uh, I experienced firsthand, uh, basically, the despair and hopelessness that unemployment can bring. And really, I just hope that our artists can, can make it through uh, the other side. I mean, the, the, the silver lining is the excellent job the government's doing in containing the virus and the support measures that have been um, put in place for, for job seekers and job keepers um, are, are clearly going to be um, helpful, although not easy, of course, for, for artists to access those. But it does give um, hope that we'll emerge from it quicker than anywhere else in the world, but, but really... What this looks like when the IMF is saying that the world's facing the worst recession since the Great Depression, that's a little bit too early to call. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a big role you've taken on in a really extraordinary time. Um, so before we move on to Agua's response to COVID-19, can we talk about what you bring to the role um, as a director? You've got extensive experience in the arts and government and re regarded as an international expert in creativity, entrepreneurship and technology. How has this played out in your career from the UK to Australia? Yeah, look, I'll take the first part of that question first and mm. um, look i think i was brought in because ultimately large institutions are extremely uh, complex and um, especially so when the world's changing as, as rapidly as it is uh, the galleries uh, follow all our, all our state institutions are fascinating because they they really are the institutional expression of uh, of contemporary western australia and um and as such i think this job is to take uh, the best of what we've got and what our artists create and situate this work uh, and our identity really in dialogue with the rest of the world. Um, as you know, WA, we're a strange place, we're an economic powerhouse. Um, our geopolitical connections to Asia and the Ocean Rim make us endlessly fascinating. Um, we're a hot house of migrant cultures, we're really entrepreneurial, high tech. A bit weird, really, if we're being honest. Um, mm. A bit left field and a bit bogan. Uh, and oddly, we're, we're both... Uh, a really hippie community and an uber wealthy uh, state. Um, and right across the state, you've got the network of the most effective Aboriginal art centres in Australia than a, mm. a real legacy uh, of history of great storytellers. So I think, um, look, our great opportunity is, is um, able to express that full identity, not really as some kind of, I don't know, parochial top thump and exercise. But I think it's a place for the public to engage in, in, in big issues from our context. And so I think what I bring uh, uh, to that is um, this confidence, really, to promote our artists um, in that international um, context. Uh, I like to think, um, I hope mm -hmm. it will bring a certain amount of energy, um, definitely um, political uh, savvy, um, broad experience in contemporary trends and understanding of how business works, of, of course, and um, mm -hmm. And really, just some, uh, just some good, good humour, um, because um, we need we're it. it. <laughs> we need it at the moment, don't we? <laughs> um, well, yeah, because because we're dealing in really, um, in really complex times with 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 complex issues, and that really should allow the curators to operate at, at multiple layers in in different art forms, even in different timelines and across different institutions. But I think um, what I bring, I suppose, uh, having worked um, internationally and across the world in many ways, is not really conceiving the gallery, it's just a series of fixed boxes, but it's a place really for, for people to play and experiment, um, to create different, different sorts of artistic journeys, really, um, mm. and experiences, because I think people want layers, well, they do want layers, and they want access, and um, I think, you know, I think I've got some of the sensibility to be able to... Um, 
to delineate what's um, what's going to be interesting and what isn't. I'm sure the gallery closures were a shock to everyone. How did Agua handle this initially? Well, it, look, it seems such a long time ago, but um, as, as you recall, the, the days leading up to um, the, the closure um, were staged as the social distancing measures changed. We sort of went from only allowing 500 people down to 100 down to um, 50 till we eventually uh, closed. And um, I suppose we did, um, as we're still doing now, which is just um, planning for a range of scenarios was being closed for whether it's one month, three months or or, or six months. Mm. And um, I'll just coincidentally, I was speaking to um, the ex-chair of Screen West um, the other day, who's a management consultant, and um, we were saying that there's not many um, scenarios that anybody faces in their careers where you've got an unknowable open date, an unknowable number of people that you're going to be allowed in, um, an yeah. unknowable people even allowed on site, um, or um, or an, and an unknowable um, budget. So I think we initially handled it like everybody else did. We we planned as best we could and adjusted as circumstances dictated yeah. um, and looking for an analogy I suppose instead of our journey being like driving a steam train where you're just charging along in a straight line <laughs> knowing exactly what you're trying to do yeah. you'd end up on a moped going down all kinds of different laneways and hitting dead ends then turning around and trying to find another path and I think that's um, mm. I think essentially everybody is is working in this um this agile kind of way and even big institutions can work in that manner so that's what we're that's what we're trying to do well you've got to be flexible i think in these times so are staff still working on site or are they remote working remotely uh, we've got a combination um look we work within in line with government's advice we've got people working from home uh, wherever it's possible um, and those numbers are being increasing as time progresses and as the kids uh, stay back from uh, school but we still got people uh, people on site as well okay and um, i imagine you know these new restrictions can bring some challenges for staff as well <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I think the main challenge is just trying to keep everybody uh, connected and feeling as though they're, they're uh, part of something yeah. because uh, yeah. workplaces, um, uh, if you're lucky enough to, to, to work in large organisations, they're basically social organisms. Um, when everyone's on site, there's, there's you know, there's, there's real energy and there's noise and there's informal conversations where you can kick ideas around or resolve uh, resolve. Um, you know diff different problems but most importantly there's the public um and their response um uh, to the work and just being out on the floor um talking to them and yeah. gauging mm -hmm. from them what they feel about things i think dealing with those social connections or the loss of those social connections is is really really hard yeah. uh, the, te the technical aspects of uh, remote meetings and shared documents and those other kinds of um uh, bureaucratic uh, type activities you need to go through just to keep um, um, things moving along mm. have pretty much been less of an issue than we first anticipated but I mean ultimately we're all sat here and um, can't wait till we can get back uh, open and operate properly again. I can imagine and so are work still on show? Uh, what is the situation or is the, is the whole building empty? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no. It's um, yeah, yeah. We've got um, we, we've got um, uh, exhibitions still on show. We've uh, we've created some virtual tours of um, the Tom Malone Prize and uh, Tom Mueller and um, Pulse Perspectives, um, which we've got up on the website. Um, but then the other aspects of the um, uh, program uh, I suppose is um, the closure of the gallery obviously affects how we plan and program yes yeah I was going to ask you that yeah mm. yeah look in, in trying to deal with um, with with the unknowables we're, we're planning in different scenarios for an open program um, really depend upon how we're allowed um, to reopen and to how many people some shows we've deferred um, we're planning to extend others that were cut short uh, when we closed and we're negotiating on on other ones uh, and even gone down to design and layouts in some of the galleries that can accommodate different scenarios because I think what we what we want to try to um, avoid in many ways is um, we're, we're in that cost benefit um, uh, analysis uh, which is a terrible a terrible term but unfortunately it's the the right one of deciding um, 
how far do we go in, in, in putting on a, an expensive exhibition if it's only going to be seen by relatively few people? Mm. Um, we've got to, we, we've, we've got to um, plan um, flexibly and, uh, and we are doing, but it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's tough for our um, exhibition planning team and our installation crew and everybody else. Um, I mean, we've made, we've made decisions, but we're prepared to change them if we need to. The, the visual arts is developing in new ways since the closures. How much do you think this will stay the distance after restrictions are lifted? Yeah, well, I think um, it, 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 I suppose there's different ways to to answer this. I think um, I think you came along to the the keynote that we did with uh, Peter Tullen from Remix, where we looked at what a 21st century art museum, contemporary museum, needs to look like. Um, because even before. Um, the, the virus came along. We were starting to really look at how we exhibit and, and how we engage because um, Peter's um, Peter's talk there, which I know many of your um, uh, contributors uh, were there at, he looked at the important trends of the experience economy and how that sort of active engagement, if you like, is, has changed. And then in the digital world, um, it's not really enough to just have a passive gallery experience and then implant that into a, a digital one where people want some form of interaction um, I mean basically I suppose the point is is that you need to be able to curate and produce to the medium that you want to um, present in so we're doing the the, the general um, virtual tours the passive side of things if you like because that's important for, for research and for, for access mm-hmm. um, generally but we're doing all kinds of other things. We've got um, Agri Your Way, um, where audiences can um, share their creations, their thoughts, um, using the, the, the hashtag. And um, it's about them being able to access Agra in their own way. Um, we've encouraged people to get involved in the hashtag between art and quarantine and hashtag stay your home challenge on social media platforms. Oh, and I we've did seen see real- that. Yes, yeah, the, the art challenge that looks great. <laughs> Tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, been, it's been really quite, it's been really quite fun. And, um, and our numbers on, on social media have, um, have, have spiked. So there's been a lot of interest in that kind of thing. In a couple of weeks, we're going to look at something called an Agro reading room with uh, photo essays and articles by our curators and artists. So we're going to um, open and then some art snacks um, where we've got, um, we'll look in more detail of works and artists in the state art collection that our guides are, are going to be pulling together. But really one of the more um, interesting things I think we're looking at is our Agra learning team, which is developing something called um, Agra Gently, which is a creative play project for, for young kids and family to just sort of um, slow down and share ideas um, around project uh, around objects within the home and um, think about change to those objects and how they can be represented in a in a creative um, in a creative way because I think it's really important to sometimes um, use technology to interact with the real world and not just get embedded in the in the technology itself because to go to to go to your, your, your question that the um, the, the visual arts is developing in, in new ways. Um, I think the trends, the, the trends people were really uh, clear and they were accelerating when there was an active live community experiences. Um, but now the virus has probably speeded up uh, the engagement of, of online. But I think once we start to hit the recovery phase and break out the other end, um, what's really hard to predict is whether... Uh, science is, is going to beat this um, virus and so whether mass public movements at home and internationally is going to bring a resurgence in, in, in mass public events or whether we've actually mm. just changed completely. But I think people mm. will want to be relieved from the isolation. They'll want to come out of the online world and back into the real, into yeah, the I real world. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And I think we've got to be prepared um, for both. But I think we're, we're determined to um, we're determined to experiment with things. I don't really have any particular fear of, of trying something and it doesn't work. I think you try and you assess, evaluate, and then modify and, and try something else. And um, in these uh, in, in these uh, difficult circumstances that we're working in, that I think that's probably a good way to go.
Yeah, no, it's great stuff. And is, is there anything you'd like to say to artists, galleries and arts organisations uh, weathering um, the storm of the virus at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm not sure there's much uh, I can say from such a privileged um, uh, position about how others can, can weather this storm. As I said um, at the start, the, the, it's, it's, it, for some people, this is absolutely the, um, the worst of times. All I can do is keep working really hard um, uh, at least to make sure the public are really engaged in the in, in the visual arts, that they they recognise just how important um, uh, it is, and then working equally hard to make sure that the galleries there to support the arts and the community. When we um, when we look to a post virus uh, recovery, and, um, and and really give all power to the to the chamber and NAMA and to the peak bodies who are. Working, um, you know, tremendously, tremendously hard uh, to to make sure that the the arts um, is essential to um, to everybody's existence, and that we get um, some good support packages um, uh, in place. Because the most important thing is that we all come out of this this other end um, uh, healthy and um, mentally. Um, mentally able to, to deal with whatever whatever the world's going to bring to us um, post-virus. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for finding time to speak um, with me today, Colin. That's fantastic. No, that's okay. Thanks, thanks for the invitation. And, and we'll see you on the other side of the, the virus. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, Colin. Cheers. Okay, bye. bye.